Lord Jesus, you are to be praised. We are in awe of you, thankful for your love, thankful that you would look upon sinners like us with compassion and mercy and grace. Be pleased this morning in our worship. We offer our hearts, our lives to you for your glory. Amen. You may be seated. At this time in our service, we take a few moments to reflect on the death of Jesus Christ in our place in preparation for taking of the Lord's table. We like to open a passage of Scripture together to do that. If you don't have a Bible, uh, there's some men at the front that will pass out Bibles to those of you who need a copy. And just slip your hand up and let them know that you need one this morning. If you don't own a Bible, we would love for you to have one for yourself, so please keep this as our gift to you this morning. I'd like to turn your attention to Isaiah chapter 59. Isaiah 59. Our world is a mess. Have you seen it lately? Have you experienced its messiness? Perhaps you're suffering from the consequences of the fall and a frustrated universe that doesn't seem to work out the way it was designed. Maybe you're suffering from the effects of the sins of people around you that populate this world. Maybe you're here this morning and you recognize your own life is a mess. Maybe you're suffering from the consequences of your own choices and your own sins. This morning, I want to put in front of us the help that is readily available in a broken and fallen world, help that is readily available to sinners like us who will only turn to the one true hope for help. In Isaiah 59, the prophet is speaking to the nation of Israel who were in a big mess. They were in a messy world. They had made choices that had resulted in their own calamity, their own judgment. And Isaiah speaks to them from the Lord's own heart. Isaiah 59, 1 to 3. Behold, Isaiah says, look at this. Yahweh's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that he cannot hear. But your sins have made a separation between you and your God. Your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not hear. Your hands are defiled with blood, your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken falsehood, your tongue mutters wickedness. The truth about our messiness, the truth about the messy world in which we live is it is in rebellion against its maker. We were all born in this condition. We all act out of this nature. And the truth is that God is not helpless. God is not deaf or blind to our plight. But there is a separation between us and God that occurs from birth for every one of us. And he's only remedied when sinners look up and turn to God himself and yield. And if your life is a mess this morning, I want you to know that there is help. There is hope for you. And it is to come to God himself and it is to come to God on his own terms. You see, what separates us from God from birth is not God's helplessness. It is not God's weakness. And it is not God's ignorance of our plight. He's not blind nor deaf. God's arm is not short. God is able and ready and eager to help all who will in humility turn to him. If you're aware this morning that your sins have separated you from the goodness of God. You need to know that God himself has provided the solution in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom he sent to earth as a man to be a sacrifice in our place at the cross. 
our problem is solved not by our solutions, but only by God's solution. That he would put his own son on a tree, on a cross, to bear God's own wrath against our sin so that Jesus would suffer in our place. In fact, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, to become sin on our behalf so that he might endure the wrath of God against that sin so that we might become God's righteousness in him. Listen, our hope as sinners is not that we could clean up our act. It's not that we could get a little bit better and a little bit better in hopes that God would look upon us with favor. It is only to admit that we have no hope in ourselves and that we only look to Jesus Christ who is eager to save all who call upon him. This morning as we take the Lord's table, we will eat bread and drink juice. These are emblems of Christ's body and his spilled blood. His substitutionary sacrifice on the cross 2,000 years ago. That sacrifice in the place of sinners. We eat these things to remember what he did. He is our only hope. He is the only solution to our plight. He is the only one that can take two alienated parties and bring them together. To reconcile enemies, to take that which has been separated and bring us into fellowship. If you're here this morning and you know Jesus Christ, you don't have to be a member of Grace Bible Church. We would invite you to take the Lord's table. There will be some moments of silence where you are to examine your own heart, confess any known sin, and enjoy the forgiveness that Jesus purchased, even making plans to repent and reconcile and do what needs to be done to fix broken relationships in your own life. As you've reflected on your own sin, as you've reflected on the grace of God purchased for you by the blood of Christ, rejoice in his forgiveness and partake of the bread and the juice. If you're not a believer here this morning, I would encourage you to not take, but just let these things pass you by. These are intended for believers who remember what Jesus has done for them. But if you're not yet a believer in Jesus Christ, I want to invite you to contemplate what Christ has done. And maybe even this day, believe the gospel. Believe that Jesus is your only hope. And then take and eat the bread and drink the juice in celebration of what Christ has done for you. But if you will not take, just remember, this is a moment for believers to remember what Christ has done. The men are going to come forward at this time and distribute those elements. Would you take those when your heart is prepared? And I'll close us in prayer.